Hi, and welcome to the Lemonade Car Show on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. Tonight, as always, we'll be answering all of your car-related questions. The Lemonade Car Show is brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA is a consumer association. It's membership-based and nonprofit, so we benefit you, the consumer. You can reach us at apa.ca or by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Clinton Stibbe. He's with Toronto Police Services, and John Raymond. He's an industry consultant. You can call us all evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Clint, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. John, welcome you're always back. here. Yeah, you're welcome back. <laughs> cop show. I like cop show. This one. <laughs> this is <laughs> my cop. Best. Rules, all yes. the laws, all the things. I want to ask you something. I know calls are going to come in, but um, in the news, especially lately, flying truck tires. It is a weird thing that doesn't happen every day but it seems to be happening more frequently what can someone do why is it happening do you have any insight into what's going on because it's, it's pretty terrifying I, well, I can only imagine well yes you can imagine those truck tires and wheels weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three hundred pounds so they're not something small and something traveling at highway speed or even say moderate speed of say 60 kilometers per hour is going to result in the death of an individual if they're struck whether you're in a car or as a pedestrian uh, the things that we have to look at is why they're coming off. There have been several safety enhancements to vehicles in order to keep those wheels from coming off, but really, in the end, it's the operator's responsibility or the driver's responsibility to inspect that machine and those particular parts to ensure that they're not gonna come loose. However, it doesn't regularly happen, and as a result, we are seeing these things occurring more and more. It doesn't happen every day, but when it does happen, unfortunately, it is in it's some cases tragic. Yeah, and Lorraine, it's happening in the car industry too, and this is a good time to talk about it because the seasonal tire change. Mm -hmm. Many people have mag wheels now, and those wheels have to be torqued with a torque wrench. Going to a, a shop and they just use a gun, and they don't check the the tightness of the of mm -hmm. the wheel nuts. Um, could cause the nuts to come off the car and the wheels to go off. And there are many cases every year at this time of year and in spring of that. Is there any way to know, I'll ask you both this, um, we, I know trucks have to do a visual walk around. There's that sign on the truck and be a good operator and check your truck every day. Can you tell by looking? Well, for the trucks, they have special um, attachments that have been put on the nuts of the wheels. Mm -hmm. You'll see them, they're usually uh, a bright color, green or okay. uh, orange, something to that effect. And it's they're a all facing the tab. Yeah, yeah. It's, they're all facing in the same direction. If they start to come loose, the idea is that the as it moves, you'll see it's almost like a dial. And if it moves out of place, it's telling you that they're coming loose. It doesn't come loose instantly. It slowly it starts working its way loose. The problem is a lot of these operators are not checking those vehicles. And that is where the fall down occurs. Well, I th this is purely my opinion, but we all know I have a thousand of them. I think the quality of truck drivers has fallen off a cliff in the past 20 years. I remember when I was a kid, it was a whole different breed of people. Like the drivers were career. A lot of them own their own rigs. Now it feels have the standards changed? Are there's more processing? congestion, so you're seeing more trucks and more questions. I'm just activity. seeing more trucks do really stupid things on the road. Well, it's, it's funny that you make that statement. How often do you see a tractor trailer involved in a major collision? That one on four? It, it happens. It's bad. But, yeah. but how often do you actually see it? Not that often. But it's, it, cars are more likely to be involved in collisions than tractor trailers. Uh, I'm not saying that every driver is the perfect driver. Mm -hmm. it's, they're not. Whether well, no, you like drive cars. a car or, or a yeah. truck, it makes no difference. Nobody's a perfect driver. Nobody works to make themselves a better driver. It just doesn't happen. But when we look at the large collisions, I can tell you, when we've looked at the major collisions downtown, mm -hmm. in maybe a year we'll see two, maybe three that involve a truck. The rest are all cars, and our fatalities are coming from cars, not from trucks, for Toronto. Now, uh, OPP, I can't speak for them, but mm -hmm. we have seen collisions on the 401 that uh, uh, 10, 12 car pileups with tractor trailers. Does it happen? Absolutely. But driving environments for the areas are slightly different. Toronto, uh, on a whole, has a few expressways, but we don't have a lot of heavy truck traffic through there. The 401, however, that's OPP territory, and there's a tremendous amount of tractor trailers going across that area. But again, I ask you, how many times do you see a fatality? Well, you see it because it's devastating, but do you see it every day? No. No, and I know the physics of a truck are different than the physics of a car. I'm just, I used to drive race trucks across the country and down into the States. We were on the road all the time. We just had a big cube truck. It wasn't a rig. But there's a difference in the behavior 
honestly, and again, my opinion, but I'm seeing dumb moves, just texting. I'm seeing truck drivers texting behind the wheel of their car, or truck. You can't, like even more so than car drivers, you can't be looking down doing that. Like, are they just dumb? Is it, are the standards lax? I well, don't know, I'm, I'm just griping now. Well, keep, keep in mind, the other thing is, have you seen tractor trailers tailgating cars? Well, we're yeah. talking inches off the bumper. Yeah. That you'd think that a normal person's not gonna do that. Well, mm. again, everybody drives according to their ability in some cases, or to the lack of their ability in others. Yeah. And what unfortunately we're seeing is uh, the defense of driving being taken out of that particular or group, or not necessarily group, but certain individuals in that group, which unfortunately is in some cases leading to those collisions. Okay, John, in the break, we were speaking a little bit about the safety features on cars, filling in the gap sometimes for skill levels. I think sometimes that's not a great thing. Yes, people being safer in cars is a really good thing, but do you think, think that the dialing back? I think these aids are very good, such as backup cameras, mm -hmm. but the prudent thing is to do what we've been doing all along, and that is to look before we back up and use these new safety technologies for what they're for, that you're driving the car and you have to be involved in that experience. Don't let the car drive for you, you're the conductor, just like a pilot. He may be flying on autopilot, but he's assessing at all times the conditions. So what do we do? We've all got kids around the same age. Mine are older than yours, but we won't get into that. We've got a generation coming up now who have only had most of these safety features on cars. And I was talking to a show host a couple days ago about traction control and how when it goes off, it goes I swear there's people that think that's a pinball machine and they got extra points. I'm like, you just drove past your ability and if it hadn't been for that, you'd be off the shoulder. And I said to my kids, do you know what that means? And my kids are both car nuts, so they do know, but a lot of people just go, okay, it, you it know, something. pulled me back on and away we go, and we do it again and it'll save me over and, and over again. That's the same yeah. thing. I think people well, are getting dulled to Well, I, w I was just gonna say, the, these are supplemental uh, safety features. It doesn't take the responsibility or the, uh, the knowledge that the driver has to have mm -hmm. away. But it's also a false sense of security. Yeah. I, uh, my wife's got a 2012 uh, Jeep Wrangler. I turned off the traction control, I was on ice, I was testing it just to see how okay. it handles with the traction control off. The stability uh, programming became active. And I was already correcting for what I had done. It was, it was a test, that's what, what I was doing. The problem was now it's inputting when I don't want it to input. Yeah. And what ends up happening, I'd already detected the car was coming out of uh, a safe area. I was already dealing with it. And now I was dealing with overcompensation from the stability controls. Okay. Now, I was able to get it back in time. But mm -hmm. the point being, if somebody that doesn't know what's happening is now faced with a secondary feed into the car or secondary uh, uh, control of the car, that now you're fighting over top of the computer to try and maintain control of the car. That's like something we're grabbing the wheel. But yes. the other issue, too, is that these people are picking up these cars at dealerships and they're not being told or taught properly what all these devices well, do and how they operate. Plus but it takes two hours to tell them where all the levers or more. and knobs and all the stuff is. will take two hours today. Yeah. But, but you don't take them on the road and give them a road test and put them into a skid and say, okay, this is how the car's gonna react. No, but maybe you tell a them video got, or something like well, that. Well, but even still, you, you haven't got the, the input or the experience to know how that car's gonna react. I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say that you can probably handle a car on uh, slippery roads. If you put it into a slide or something, you're gonna know how to get out of it. Because I get all the, this extra testing, exactly, like we exactly, do this. Right. That's exactly. part, that's part as, of the as do we, yeah. as do we. Yeah. The average driver does not get that. No. The average driver, and I've seen it many times, where the car ahead of me goes out of control. I had no problems driving through the same section of roadway, yeah. but yet that individual has lost control. I beg people to put their kids and go with them, because it's a nice way to sneak it in, beyond driver's ed, which I understand is an expense, and then I go, drop, an, drop another, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Drop another 500 bucks or a thousand. I know it's a lot of money, but what you can learn in those one day close course with an instructor, things, they'll put it and in skip it. It'll for the rest something. of your life. It will, and I think two cars hit, there's 2,000 bucks right there without even doing anything. So I, I say to people, I understand, but invest in that stuff. It's never a waste of money. because Invest in safety well, is what it They show you what your car skill. can't do. Yep. And they take you past that point and scare the crap out of you. At this time of year, I have pet peeves. People that don't put on their lights, they rely on automatic lights or they don't realize there's no tail lights. I was writing that today again. It's every and week, or every, yeah, every week I could write that call. Or they don't check year. light bulbs or See, faded man lamps. Manufacturers light up the dash, though. You know what? Easy fix, tie in the tail to 
the dash stopped doing it, and it's almost every manufacturer they make me crazy. And why anyway. is it always on the highway? Always at dusk, yeah. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales re regulator, returns after this short break. If you'd like to ask our experts a question, please call us 800-968-7836.